Today we're going to make a serving board out of a couple of different types of hardwood. Once you've got your timber sorted, first thing I do is measure up the timber to cut, usually about 50 or 60 mil extra in length compared to what the finished product wants to be. In this case, I'm doing a serving board, so I'm trimming them at 460 to start with as a rough cut. Next thing you do is cut them on the drop saw. It doesn't have to be perfect because you've got the excess, excess length that you've allowed for. Next thing you gotta do is, if, if you pick timber that has rounded edges, like beveled edge, you need to rip a straight edge on one side of them. In this case, a couple of the pieces I've chosen do have that, so I'll rip a straight edge so that when you glue the pieces of timber together, the rounded edge doesn't cause any issues with little gaps or not gluing perfectly. Usually a, a finished serving board I try and have around 23, 25 mil finished product. Usually I allow about five mil for, you know, running them through the thickness are, sanding, you know, anything else that, that comes up. So I've measured these out to about 27 mil for each, for the width of them all. Obviously you've got to be very careful doing this because it's a small size. So your hands are obviously pretty close to the blade. So you've got to make sure you use push sticks or whatever sort of setup you've got going on. Once you've done them all, then what I like to do is just quickly run them over the, the bench sander just to clean up anything that's going to might hinder the gluing process because sometimes you might find down the line even if especially if you use sort of second hand timber is there might be some paint on them or just little bits and pieces that might cause it not to stick as good as it needs to to hold so this takes you know one minute and it might make the biggest difference down the line so run them through quickly on the sander next thing you want to do is work out your pattern again this is like a personal preference i try and make every product completely different whether it's to do with the pattern i do the size the cut the routering whatever so in this case just base it off i tend to just base it off what timbers i'm using with the colors try not to blend them in too much sort of to show the difference but again this is all personal preference once you've picked your pattern you want to choose the best side of each piece of timber and then have them all facing the same way this ensures the serving board will look as good as it possibly can with the timber you've chosen place your pieces in the order that you want them and then turn them sideways on a 90 degree angle make sure you turn them all the same way so that you keep all the good sides up or down whatever you've chosen Next up is the gluing process. Don't skimp on the glue because you can always wipe off excess glue later. You really want to make sure you cover the whole surface of each piece of timber. Now it's time for clamping up. Place each piece of timber in one by one in the order that you want them. Lining them up evenly at one end. Once you've got them all in the clamp, I use a scrap piece of timber to make sure all the pieces are laying flat on the clamps to make sure they're as flat as possible. I do this process a couple of times as I tighten all the clamps. Then you can wipe off the excess glue. Sometimes I try and push the glue into the timber, just make sure it fills any extra gaps. Once you've cleared the glue, then you can check to make sure all the pieces are sitting flat on the clamps. To ensure the clamping area is even, grab extra clamps and clamp from above as well, spaced out evenly. This will ensure the whole surface area of each piece of timber is clamped properly. Then wipe off any extra excess glue that might have come after doing the extra clamping. I usually leave it in the clamps for a few hours. Then once I've taken it out of the clamps, I leave it to dry completely for another 24 hours just to make sure it's completely cured before I use any machinery on it like the thickness of which is the next process. Now that the board's completely dry I run a chisel over the excess glue and just scrape off what I can easily then let the thickness do the rest of the work. First thing to do with the thicknesser is set up the height. The first couple of pass throughs almost don't touch just to make sure you don't jam up the machine when you're setting it up. For each pass through with hardwood, I usually do just under a quarter turn, which prevents any jamming up. I'll work on the one side until it's basically flat and clean of any glue. Then I repeat the process on the other side 
and get them both pretty good. Then I start again on the original side and finish the job on both sides. Once you've finished with the thicknesser, you've got to make sure that it sits flat on both sides, especially with a, a reversible chopping board or serving board. Now you want to mark up for the finished size of the serving board. I always allow extra so that I can cut off any snipe that might have happened through the thicknesser or any extra blemishes that happen to be in that area. You want to make sure that each end's cut is completely square. My drop saw can only cut 310mm in depth, so everything I make is under that size, just to make it easier for every project I do. With this serving board I'm actually cutting out a curve, so I usually draw it by hand before cutting it on the bandsaw. There's no right or wrong with the shape, it's completely up to you what you do with this. As long as you think it looks good, then you're good to go. Next you want to cut the shape on the bandsaw. Make sure you do the cut as clean as possible. I actually cut it a little too deep in one part and it made it a lot more work down the track because of it. Since I've got the curve cut out now, I want to round the edges just to tie in with the curve. So I usually just find something in the shed that's the right curve and mark out the curve that I want. Repeat the process on the bandsaw, then hit all the curves with the bench sander. This is where you can clean up any blemishes you may have done when using the bandsaw. I actually had to do a lot more file work in this area, mainly because of where I cut it too deep in the center there. Once you've got the serving board looking the shape you want it, it's time to putty both sides. With the initial sanding, I usually use a 120 grit sandpaper with the orbital. Now it's time to router the serving board. I've done quite a large bevel on the top of this serving board and then just a small bevel on the base of it. Still makes it a double sided serving board, but this way it gives you more options. Some people might like a bigger curve, some might like a smaller curve. Once it's all routed up, it's time for a final sand. I use a 240 grit sandpaper with the orbital and then I use 320 grit sandpaper by hand over the faces and also the whole sides on both faces and all the edges. Now it's time to oil the serving board. I use a food grade mineral oil on all my chopping boards and serving boards. I've found mineral oil to be the best option. I don't use brushes, one because they cost more and also because they have a tendency to leave brush hairs on the project. I've found using clean old rags the most cost effective and efficient way to cover the serving boards. With edge or end grain serving boards, the oil soaks in quite a bit. So my first coat's quite thick and I let it sit there for a couple hours before I remove any excess oil that hasn't soaked in. I've found that after three coats of oil, the serving board is good to go. You'll find by the third coat that most of the oil is just sitting on the surface. In between coats of oil, I use a 1200 grit wet and dry sandpaper to make sure the serving board is as smooth as possible. Once the third coat's done, I wipe off the excess oil, give it one last sand and let it sit for a few days. It usually takes quite a few days for the oil to sit and I recommend people not using the boards for at least a week after it's been oiled. I hope you liked this video. If you've got any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to reply. For more of my work, you can check out my Etsy store, which is just Layor Woodworks. The link will be in the description. Thank you.